Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I have a pretty awesome build to show off. My new HPA SMG primary, the KWA QRF Mod 1. So let's jump right into the build. Here we have the QRF Mod 1, and without any hesitation, I'm gonna rip this thing open. To access the gearbox, I'm first gonna split the upper from the lower by removing both body pins. Pulling the charging handle back is gonna allow the upper to slide forward and off. I will do some work on the upper and the rail system later, so let's just set this aside for now. There's nothing too crazy here in terms of accessing the gearbox. For the most part, the KWA QRF Mod 1 is going to break down quite similarly to standard M4s. I'm going to remove the stock and take off the buffer tube end cap, and there lies our buffer tube screw. Removing the screw at the base of the buffer tube is going to allow the buffer tube assembly to slide off. With the buffer tube completely removed, I can now access and remove the quick change spring. Next up is the pistol grip. On the QRF, there are two screws, one at the base and one at the rear of the grip. Removing them both is gonna allow the base plate to come off, revealing the motor. Using a small punch tool, I unhook both motor connection points and then pull the motor out. With the motor removed, I then remove the pistol grip itself by loosening the two Phillips head screws at the base of the pistol grip. Keeping those screws inside the designated holes, I then pull the entire grip off. Next up, I remove the sling plate with an Allen key. And then I twist off the buffer tube base, being careful not to snag any of the wires as I rotate. Lastly, I'm gonna punch out the body pin located above the trigger, and this is the final piece holding the gearbox in place. The gearbox can then be gently lifted up and out. You'll see here that I removed the mag release system. I ended up cutting it from the video edit because removing these parts are not needed to access the gearbox, unlike most other M4 rifles. All right, with the QRF gearbox removed, let's go ahead and take out all the internals. To remove the charging handle, remove the small hex screw along the top side. The charging handle and the spring can then be removed and set aside. Next, I remove all the screws clamping the gearbox shell together. With the gearbox opened up, I then remove absolutely everything internally to make room for the Wolverine Inferno engine as our HPA system here. Like I said, for the HPA unit in this build, I chose the Wolverine Inferno. I've seen great performance out of this engine in prior builds and I wanted something where I could up the rate of fire as this is a full auto SMG build. First things first with the engine, for the KWA QRF, you're gonna need a version two gearbox, so M4 specs, but you're gonna need to replace the nozzle with an AK Inferno engine nozzle. This is just one of those instances where the KWA QRF differs from most standard M4 platforms. To install the AK nozzle, simply twist off the end of the cylinder, pull out the stock nozzle, transfer over the retention piece, o-ring and spring into the AK nozzle and then twist the cylinder back together. All right, to drop the engine in, I lay the trigger board and the cylinder into place and then secure the trigger board with the pre-existing screw from the QRF gearbox. With everything set in place, I route the air hose through the motor hole and then route the wires through the channels in the gearbox. 
I did have to Dremel out a small divot in the back of the gearbox located here to allow the wires from the engine to run to the trigger board. Other than this, there were absolutely no other instances of Dremeling needed. The engine itself is good to go, but I had to make some modifications to the selector plate to allow the proper three-stage functions. The KWA QRF gearbox shell has notches indicating when the selector switch is in safe, semi, and full auto, left to right respectively. There is a small switch on the engine's trigger board that should make no contact in safe, no contact in semi, and then full contact in full auto. I had to shave down the contact area of this selector plate because it was making full contact with the trigger board switch in semi-auto, effectively passing over semi and providing only full auto and safety functions. Once that's taken care of, I threw the safety latch back on and then reinstalled the stock QRF trigger. With the trigger making solid contact on the micro switch, it's time to close up the gearbox. I gently lay the top of the shell into place and make sure there are no wires being snagged as the gearbox closes together. To secure the gearbox back together, I am hand tightening all of the gearbox screws. Before installing the gearbox back into the body, this is the point where I'd test the engine for proper install. Safe, semi, and full auto are all looking good. To reinstall the gearbox into the body, drop the gearbox into the lower while routing the airline through the pistol grip and the wires out the rear. And make sure to drop the gearbox into place with the selector plate in safe corresponding with the selector switch in safe on the lower receiver. If the bolt catch fell out during disassembly, just be sure to throw that in there before completely dropping in the gearbox. Snap the rear body pin back through to loosely secure the gearbox. And then I reinstall the charging handle on the top of the gearbox by connecting the spring, laying the charging handle in place, and then reinstalling the original charging handle screw. You'll see here on reassembly that I don't have that sliding plate connected to the charging handle. It completely broke off due to a weak connection point. It's really no big deal to me. I'll either just leave the ejection port open all of the time or I'll modify the door later down the road. Next, to reattach the buffer tube, screw in the base, being careful not to snag any wires. There's a channel in the bottom that's gonna allow the wires to run through. On top of that slides the sling plate, fastened on with the original screw. The buffer tube itself then slides over all of that and is secured on with the screw at the base of the tube. I then popped the buffer tube cap back on and then slid in the retractable stock. I'm replacing the stock QRF grip with an Evike EMG Delta grip because I had it hand stippled and it has a door and an HPA hose hole located in the bottom without any modifications needed. Using the stock pistol grip screws, I then tighten it into place and feed the hose through the door and then snap the door shut. For the barrel system in this build, I'm using a Blumies Airsoft R-Hopped 260mm ZCI 6.02 diameter inner barrel, and that all sits inside a KWA T6 hop-up unit. Just a heads up that the KWA T6 hop-up unit does require the feeding tube to be shaved down a few millimeters to allow the QRF magazines to fit and feed correctly. That's just a matter of sanding down the feeding tube. And that is it for the HPA install. For my optic, I'm using the Feiyachi V30, a red dot that I am a big fan of. I did produce a full review video on this optic, so check it out in the link below to see all the features that made it the right choice for this build. For my vertical grip, I'm once again using the BCM Gunfighter. You'll find this grip riddled all over my channel's content. It's simply one of my favorites. For my light source, I'm using the Navrich Rifle Light. And then to cover up my extended barrel and reduce the overall sound profile of the rifle, I have a Novrich modular suppressor as my muzzle device. And that's it. I took this build out to home base, the airsoft den for some test firing, and I was extremely pleased with the results. 
Thanks for checking out the video guys, be sure to hit that bell and subscribe if you're not already for any future builds, epic edits, and to see this rifle in action. I've got my next major Milson planned, Conflicts 8 over in Indiana, and I do plan on using this as my primary rifle. I'll see you guys in the next one.